welcome to another video from ExplainingComputers.com. This time we're going to check out the Ubuntu 2404 Linux distro. This was released on April the 25th, 2024, so let's go and take a closer look. Right, it's now about quarter past seven on Thursday the 25th of April 2024 and here we are on the canonical Ubuntu website where Ubuntu 2404 has just been released. This latest version of Ubuntu is codenamed the Noble Numbat and in case you don't know a Numbat is an endangered insectivorous marsupial from Western Australia with distinctive regal markings down its back. And as we can see, the Noble Numbat is labelled LTS, which stands for Long Term Support, and this indicates it has five years of free security updates. Plus, if we sign up for Ubuntu Pro, which is free for personal use, support is extended to 10 years. And Ubuntu Pro subscribers can even purchase an extra two years with the Legacy Support add on, which takes the total support to, wait for it, 12 years. And uh, as we can see, Canonical now offer this 12-year support commitment for many older versions of Ubuntu. Anyway, back with the uh, latest release, let's click on uh, Download for free. There we are. And on this page, there is some very helpful information. It tells us about what's new, including a new desktop installer and a new app center, as we shall see. And we can also here see the system requirements, which are a minimum of a 2 GHz dual-core processor, 4 GB of RAM, and 25 GB of drive space. So let's uh, go back up here and uh, click to download uh, our 6 GB ISO file. There we are. We can also here sign up for a newsletter if we wish, but uh, for now we'll just save the file. Let's stick it in a, a nicer Ubuntu folder like that and uh, save the file. And whilst the download takes place, it's worth noting that a new long-term support version of Ubuntu is released every two years, with the last one being 2204, also known as the Jammy Jellyfish, in April 2022. Between each long-term support release, there are also six monthly updates, but as these have just nine months of support, many people stick to the LTS versions. And I'd note that in this video, when I describe new features, these will be things that have changed since the last LTS release. Anyway, I think we should now speed on through until the download is complete. And there we go, the Noble Numbat is in the building. So let's use the free program Belena Etcher to write it to a USB drive. Let's just uh, pick the file sitting our Ubuntu directory. There we are, 2404, like that. Select our drive. Here is a USB drive plugged into my system, and do note that flashing the Ubuntu ISO to the USB drive will delete everything on the USB drive. So let's now click on Flash, and if we again apply the magic of filmmaking to advance the progression of time, there we are. We've now got a bootable USB drive containing Ubuntu 2404. Right, I've now plugged our USB drive into my i5 test rig, so let's turn on the power. And the PC is set to boot from the USB drive, with the only other storage connected being a blank SSD on which we're going to install Ubuntu. And uh, here we are, something's happening. Let's now uh, try and install Ubuntu. And here we are arrived on the desktop. Things are still going on, I think. There are Noble Numbat, so they've gone again. Look, it's preparing Ubuntu. And here we are running the new Ubuntu desktop installer, which has a new user interface built in Flutter, which is an open source application development framework created by Google. And we're being asked to confirm our language, so I'll stick with English. And we now have right at the start some accessibility options. I think I'll go for seeing and give us a larger text just so we can see things a bit more clearly. And then we'll have a, a UK keyboard because uh, that's what I've got connected. And we'll use a wired connection to uh, keep us connected to the internet. And at this stage, we could, if we wished, try Ubuntu. We could click down here and just have a look at it running from the USB drive. But I want to do an install, so we'll stick with install Ubuntu. 
and we're now being offered the choice of interactive or automated installation. And to explain what's going on here, in Ubuntu 24.04, for the first time, the desktop installer is based on the same Subiquity and Curtin technologies used in Ubuntu server. And this allows an auto-install option to be provided in the graphical installer, which will be very useful for those who are rolling out Ubuntu for lots of users and wish to automate user creation and other kinds of configuration. Although here, that's not us, so we'll stick with interactive installation. Next, the new installer gives us a choice of how many applications we want to be installed. We can have a default selection of just the essentials or an extended selection, including things like LibreOffice. I'm going to go for the extended selection. And we can now install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware, and also multimedia codecs. This will even sort out in video graphics drivers where needed, and we do need them on this system. So we will do it and click on Next. So as we work on through, we've now got options for how we want to install Ubuntu. Here I'm going to erase the disk and install Ubuntu on it, nice and straightforward on my uh, test rig. And uh, next we have to create an account. There we go. And again, we'll click on Next, where we'll uh, keep the time zone as it is. And then finally, we can review our choices. There they all are. I'm sure they're fine. So we'll now click on Install. And I hope you'll agree that was a very straightforward, a very clear installation process. So let's now grab hold of time and pull it forward at an accelerated rate. And there we are. Ubuntu 2404 LTS has been installed. So we can now just restart the system and remove our USB drive and press enter. And here we are first booting into the Noble Numbat where I need to log in. And there we are, we have a, a first run wizard. Let's just uh, flick through this. We'll uh, skip enabling Ubuntu Pro for now, but I will share data with the Ubuntu team so I can see how things are working. And uh, we'll look at the App Center a bit later on. So for now, we can click on Finish. And as usual in my operating system reviews, I'm now going to make some scaling changes so things read better on video. And I'll come back to you after that. Greetings, here I am back again. And after a bit of testing, I can report that Ubuntu 2404 is slick, solid, and has no obvious issues. By default, we still have a dock on the left and a panel at the top. And indeed, aside from a new default desktop background, it doesn't look that different to Ubuntu 2204. And that's good, things shouldn't be changed just for the sake of it. Ubuntu 2404 ships with the GNOME 46 desktop environment, which, as previously, has various tweaks applied to improve usability over a vanilla install. If we click top right, where we can do things like shutting down the system, restarting, things like that. We find some revamped quick settings, and now in these little sort of pill-shaped pods that can uh, show various status information, and we can also click them to open up extra settings in sub-menus. Talking of settings, if we open up the main settings like that, there have been various changes here. Some are relatively simple. So for example, privacy has become privacy and security. And then if we go up and click on mouse and touchpad, we find a much improved layout with uh, animations and also more options. And indeed, if we look back to Ubuntu 2204, we can see how much things have changed. And what we now have here in Ubuntu 2404 will be a particular interest for those who use Ubuntu on a laptop. And to demonstrate this, because I'm currently on a desktop, let's go across to my laptop running Ubuntu 2404, where we can see all of the different touchpad settings for clicking and scrolling, which are most welcome. More broadly, over in settings here, things have been uh, tidied up a bit because we now have a system menu. And if we again look back to Ubuntu 2204, near the bottom, we used to have region and language, users and date and time. But now, here in Ubuntu 2404, wait for it, if I click on the new system menu, all of those things are now integrated under system. And a final thing to note here, both in settings and indeed more broadly, is that the text here 
does look a bit more spindly and has become more difficult to read. And this is because the Ubuntu font has been changed to make it thinner, and so it really is more spindly and more difficult to read. Fortunately, it does look better if we choose a dark theme, so uh, let's do that. I think the text is now much clearer, but I'm really not a fan of the new font. Moving on, other changes include the replacement of the top left activities button, which used to be here, with what's now called the dynamic workspace indicator, which was first introduced in GNOME 45. But uh, do not fear, we can still click on this to open up the workspace switcher. But it now also features little dots to indicate how many virtual workspaces are open. And if I scroll with a mouse wheel, there we are. We can switch between different workspaces. That's very exciting indeed. Turning to behind the scenes action, under the hood, Ubuntu 2404 is based on Linux kernel 6.8, a nice new kernel, and it's also got many improvements to increase security. These include the placing of restrictions on unprivileged user namespaces, Intel Shadow Stack support, and the disabling of old transport security layer versions. These are all things that many users may be blissfully unaware of, but they're important security improvements. Guess what? Here I am back again. I've now selected a different Noble Numbat wallpaper. I think I prefer this one. And I thought we'd now turn our attention to applications or what we used to call programs or software. And if we click the Show Apps button down here, we can see all the applications on this system as part of our extended install. They uh, span two pages, as we can see, although if we'd gone for the minimal install, they would have fitted on just one page. And the main additions we get in the extended install are the LibreOffice suite down here, as well as the Thunderbird email client and the Rhythmbox media player. But what we don't have in either the minimal or the extended install is the Ailes Riot Solitaire program. Indeed, we don't have any games now in Ubuntu, and that's something, of course, we'll have to fix. However, what we do have is GNOME Clocks, which is a rather handy to have, because you can use this, for example, to set an alarm to ensure you don't miss a cup of tea. Also making its debut in Ubuntu 2404 is the new App Center. I mentioned this earlier, and here it is. It was created in Flutter, just like the new installer, and it looks very nice indeed. Down here, we can manage our applications and their updating, as you can see, although it's also worth noting that we still have, we go back to all applications, we still have software and updates. Let's just run that up. And this handles updating of the operating system and also handles things like additional drivers. This will populate in a second, I'm sure. There we are with the NVIDIA proprietary driver that we let the system install during installation. Good to see the NVIDIA driver was installed there for us without any issues at all. And uh, it's also worth noting that new to Ubuntu 2404 is also a firmware updater for, uh, well, updating the firmware of the hardware on the system. So we do have the new, uh, new App Center over here, but we still have to keep our wits about us to keep everything up to date. Now, when it comes to the new App Center, it's worth pointing out that this can be used to install applications in Canonical's own Snap package format or the Debian Deb package format, although the App Center cannot be used to install Deb packages that you download yourself. And I won't here get into the great debate about the use of Snaps in Ubuntu. Say that, they do now seem to work very well. They're much faster than they were. And there are plenty of other distros if you don't want to use Snaps. And so, for now, let's test out the App Center by installing something, and it's got to be Solitaire. So let's just uh, put in there the search term for Ale Riot Solitaire. And as we can see, it comes up only as a dev package. I would guess this is why it's not included with Ubuntu now, because it's not available as a snap. Let's just show what happens if we search for something with a snap. Caden Live, for example, will come up there as both Snap and Debian, whereas if we look at uh, the Solitaire package, it's only available as a, a Debian package, as a Deb. So let's click on that there. There it is, and we'll now install it. Let's hope it works. I have to put in my password. 
and there we are, it seems to have been installed. So in theory, it'll be here in a all applications. Is it on the end now? There it is. Oh, look, Ubuntu is now looking even better because I can play Solter. So this has made me very happy indeed. I'll get on with playing a bit of Solter, and in a second, we'll have an inter title. Ubuntu 2404 is, as anticipated, very solid and professional and it's great to be able to commit to a distro with such long-term support. And for me personally, that's likely to become more important as I recommence my quest to see if I can transition entirely from Windows to Linux. And to do that, I have to find alternatives to the Adobe software I use to make my videos. And so, for example, I'm planning on testing out Autograph, which is an alternative to Adobe After Effects, available for Windows, Mac, but also Linux. Although, like many major creative applications made available for Linux, it only officially supports a very few distros, one of which is Ubuntu. And so, guess what? I'm going to be running Ubuntu. But now, that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon.